Meg Pride is the founder and CEO of the beauty product discovery platform Brandify. Transforming the way we shop for beauty products, Meg's journey to launching the company and their in-house skincare line, Brandify Skin, is a must hear. Stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome to Founded Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable in Maine has been an incredible journey so far, and I've decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, and so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's a delight to welcome our guest for today, Meg Pride. Having previously worked in consumer packaged goods, Meg realized the huge lack of consumer transparency in beauty that could be solved by technology. She launched Brandify with a mission to make great skincare accessible to all through a mobile app. Offering competitive alternatives to products with premium price points, Brandify now has an online community of over 90,000 people where they share customer feedback and beauty advice. It's made shopping even more fun too. Brandify offers a similarity score and if it can't identify a similar enough alternative product, Brandify Skin comes to the rescue. Meg created the company's new in-house skincare line to fit yet another gap in the industry and directly meets consumers' needs. She is truly challenging the status quo in the beauty industry and has forever changed the way consumers shop. It is my absolute pleasure to have us with us today. So Meg, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a delight to be here. And uh, I'm excited to uh, talk more about Brandify and about your line as well. Oh, I'm really excited. Well, you know, you, know the, you know the deal. The first question I always ask is, who in a nutshell? So it's going to be for you. Who in a nutshell is Meg? I am a farm girl from the middle of nowhere in Virginia. And I ended up on this entrepreneurial journey um, really by happenstance, but I'm so excited that I ended up here and I feel like we actually are changing the, um, status quo of the beauty industry. And that's a really exciting thing to be a part of. You certainly, I can't wait to get into that, but okay. So you, you were born and raised in Virginia. Is that correct? I, I was, I am. Mm -hmm. Um, and I live here now with a, um, massive chocolate lab and, um, really enjoy gardening and kind oh. of the, the country, <laughs> which and is pretty so, crazy to have a tech company um, yeah. where we do. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I want to ask, like, what was your first in, in Virginia, I guess, what were your first, I guess, uh, entry point or discovery into the beauty industry? Like, do you have some childhood memories of you and beauty kind of merging? Yes. I come from a long line of, um, like feisty female entrepreneurs. And my great grandmother actually started a dress shop back when it was not that common for women to start and own businesses. And my grandmother carried that through. And so I remember my childhood visiting, you know, visiting her dress shop and turning through the pages of W magazine and, um, you know, playing with the perfumes and products that she had in the store, because those were always kind of add ons to dresses, of course. Um, yeah. And that was my, that was my first introduction really to the beauty industry. Uh, so, uh, so I know you went to study at University of Virginia, you studied uh, science and commerce or tell us, am I, am I correct there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's basically a business major, but they call it, um, yeah, the science of commerce or something, something silly like that. And ended up going back to business school wow. because I wanted to take that kind of like entrepreneurial um, small business mindset and turn it into something more disruptive. Um, so you had, I never, I, I definitely a, never planned yeah. on being in beauty. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. I yeah. mean, most of us don't. I mean, I can tell you for me as well. Like <laughs> I, um, I studied engineering at university and I think the furthest I guess from there was like creating shampoos and conditioners for a living. So <laughs> you never know where life takes you, but then it's sort of but like, it's so funny good. how, 
it's oh thank you and it's funny how it actually like even looking back I'm like it makes sense but then it it doesn't but it does it's one of those weird things but I I would love to know a little bit about your kind of you have quite a few corporate experiences before you went on to create and found Brandify so tell us a little about those for those years yeah I worked for a massive private label manufacturer we made everything from you know pharma pharmaceutical creams to infant formula to the generic versions of Advil and Tylenol. And that really shaped my experience because we would put the exact same powder into two different containers, sell one for $50 and one for 10. I couldn't believe that was happening. It just seemed so wrong as a consumer. And that kind of sparked my interest in consumer transparency and like why there isn't more of it or why more consumers don't know that this happens all the time. Definitely. Uh, so then and did then, you, yeah, so continue, continue. I'll, and I'll, then it, uh, I yeah. interned at a tech startup in between my pharma, um, you know, consumer packaged goods career and business school. And that's where I realized I could probably put the two of these things together to help consumers get the best um, knowledge and insight. So I kind of want to now, I, I see now, like, like I'm putting all the puzzles together and like I can really now see how eventually Brandify came to be. So what was those initial, I guess, uh, like, was it like a couple of years in the making? Was it a few months in the making? Like how did you, what was this few moments before the launch? Um, so it's so funny that you asked that because I feel like my favorite entrepreneurial quote is like, it's 10 years to an overnight success, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel like that's certainly been the case for us. We started the app. I actually launched the app while I was in business school in 2018. So four years ago, almost five years ago at this point. And we launched really with that purpose of helping kind of consumers understand when they get the best value. Um, and it really took off in the beauty space, which was super exciting and part of obviously our heritage, Um, in comparing products just because that's what consumers care so much about Um, and yeah so that's kind of how we got started but certainly not yesterday (laughs) and the name I'm I'm always curious just to know how the name came to be Uh, so I was (laughs) we were actually submitting for a pitch competition and yeah. the name, the working name I had at the time was like something like store brand smarty, like completely horrific and abysmal. <laughs> I, <laughs> like I, I was, I, you know, when I heard that, I was thinking like, oh, but then I'm not glad you said it. <laughs> I much prefer <laughs> Brandify. Like, I love it when I love, I love some good uh, criticism slash. So just like, you know, <laughs> throw them in there. But um, it was. It was just one of those things where we were trying to find the right name. And obviously, it's a bit about like letting go of the label and defying the label, defying the brand. And so that's how we came up with Brand Defy. And um, we just, it's just been sticky. It's just always stuck with us. Uh, Yeah. It's a beautiful name. I think it's hard to pronounce, (laughs) but. No, I, I think the opposite. I think Brandify is super simple, really easy to pronounce, and it kind of also encapsulates uh, in a way like what, what you what you're doing. But it's still like that Uber style like name where it's like still its own like unique word. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't really know what it does. <laughs> exactly. Like you want to know more, yeah. but you can understand it's to do with brands. But you were like, tell me a bit more. So I like yes. it. I really, really like it. If anybody ever says like I'm gonna brandify it, I'll absolutely die. That would That's be it. so cool. <laughs> That's the thing. You want it to be like an like the, like I'm gonna Netflix and I I'm gonna Uber somewhere. You want it to be an adjective in a way, right? Yeah. So this is perfect. Um, But so tell us like that kind of like, I guess, for anyone new listening who's not familiar with Brandify, what is it all about? It's about um, helping each other find like the best products. And that's what I love so much about it. It's like if you go onto the community section in the app, you'll see people asking like, what primer should I wear on my wedding day? And like 15 people respond with, their like best advice and so that's the aspect of it that I absolutely love the most and um really what you know the community and platform we've built is all about um 
and That's that amazing. makes me really happy. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's no sponsored content. It's all organic reviews, community led. It's just, you feel like there's that authenticity that you just can trust what's being said because we live in a universe where everything is, I mean, as brands as well, like we pay influencers to promote and yeah. obviously we're not going to pay them to be like, say like, you know, I'm paying you $1,000, <laughs> say, yeah, say something bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, that doesn't exist. Um, but I think, you know, we're missing in this very saturated uh, social landscape that authentic cut through um, community, social platform, et cetera. Because even some of these non, like, you know, non, uh, like non-brand, more community-led businesses, um, they are still very much like sponsored. You know, you have like these magazines right. and publishers that allow sponsorship and you still don't know what's organic or not. So is that something it's that you, you've said from day one? It's all pay to play. Is that, how do you guys then, like, um, is that something that from day one, you're like, we are going to make sure no sponsored content? It, it was something I felt really strongly about and I still feel strongly about, but I think I felt even more strongly about it in the early days because yeah. once you give it up, you can't get it back. Um, exactly. And so like that trust is just uh, kind of critical to our growth and success as a platform. And it was part of the reason, you know, at a certain point, and I'll tell you more kind of about our fundraising journey and how we navigated all of that, we still had to figure out like, how are we going to generate revenue, right? Exactly. As us, because yeah. it certainly would have been easy early on to partner with brands to generate revenue. But I feel like it just undermined, it would have undermined our entire platform. Hmm. But, you know, that's actually amazing because you have like thousand plus brands and I know you would have had a lot of brands coming to you, let alone you going to them saying, hey, we have budget. Can we do something paid? And for you guys to be like, probably like, no, that's not how we work. Like, you know, it, it is very, very, um, I think, very telling of what you're creating. But yeah, going to that kind of question you were saying, like, how then was your, you know, whatever you can share, like your revenue goals and targets and then your fundraising journey as well? Yeah, so we um, had we knew that if we built a community, it, we would be able to generate revenue at some point in the future. But we didn't know exactly what that looked like. I had kind of five ways listed as to how we could eventually end up generating revenue from our community and from our platform. Um, one of which, of course, was partnering with brands. And we even had a subscription box for a hot second. It was actually incredibly successful, but the like long-term sustainability of it wasn't there. Um, and my background being in consumer packaged goods kind of was like the, the thing that led us to where we are now. The mm. portfolio that I specifically worked on when I was at this big CPG company was all done via contract manufacturing. And I'm sure, as you know, a lot of the beauty industry is done via contract manufacturing. So even Estee Lauder has a good portion of its portfolio made not by Estee Lauder factories. It's done, you know, at a factory in Florida that other companies also use for those that don't understand what contract manufacturing is. And I realized that we could actually use, you know, my background and knowledge to launch products that our community was asking for that didn't exist in the market yet or where an affordable alternative didn't exist yet. Yeah, no, definitely. So, so did you find uh, like a lot of on that journey, a lot of, um, I guess you could say pushback from your stakeholders to like change strategy or did you kind of, as a founder, just kind of go, I need to like, okay, I need to listen, but I need to like stick to my guns on this. Yeah. It's kind of wild because I feel like I have always been really, um, good at taking feedback, but that was yeah. definitely an area where I was more stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm lucky that I've had like a lot of mentors and investors that have stuck by us with through all these kind of business changes and life changes. Yeah. And um, I think part of that is uh, they invested in me as a person and mm. trust me to figure out like, okay, what's the best path, path forward for our company? 
Yep. No, definitely. Um, I think that's it. Uh, uh, so now Brandify, I know you, I touched upon it a little bit in the intro. Um, definitely there are some, you know, a lot of data touch points and you can see certain gaps in the market that brands perhaps are missing out on because you're seeing that there is that white space. So then Brandify yeah. Skin, which I know previously, you know, Skin Core transitioned to Brandify Skin. Um, tell us how that came to be. So that was really consumers we use two data sets from a mobile app. We get um, over 60,000 monthly searches. And those are specifically consumers, community members looking for affordable alternatives to specific products. And yeah. so we're able to see that data and understand, okay, what are consumers looking for a more al- affordable alternative to? Um, yeah. And that gives us really a benchmark product that consumers like. And then, um, we also have a second data set where consumers actually can say like, please help me find an affordable alternative to this specific product. So they really ask and we use those two data sets to kind of determine where the gaps are. It's crazy because, and I know we talked about this a little bit before um, we started recording, but I'm obsessed with your shampoo and conditioner. (laughs) Um, Like love it. And what's been so interesting from a data perspective in our app is the searches for, affordable alternatives to prestige hair care have skyrocketed. Um, so it's like a whole new booming category. And I feel like Fable and Maine, I, I looked up the price point because I was like, would I rebuy this? Definitely would. I was so oh. excited <laughs> um, that it was like actually, actually like kind of affordable prestige, which is great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was actually on, on that note, it'd be interesting to see, like, do you find, because I know in Brandify socials, you have this really great, like, kind of like similarity products, different price points, but obviously there are different benefits and, and different uh, efficacies. Do you find like the consumers are more price conscious or more performance conscious in general? Yeah, so our consumer is more value conscious. Yeah. Um, she is, um, well, per- so, and by that, I mean, like she cares more about performance. She doesn't yeah. want something cheap. She wants something that no. works. Um, and that really drives her decision. So there's plenty of things that she's willing to pay up for. Um, although that's certainly changing a little bit with the current like economic landscape, especially in the States. Definitely. And yeah, we don't know where the industry and the economy is heading right now with this whole talks about recession and this and that. So it's yeah. quite, it is, you have to be very mindful of us. And, and now today you are finding amazing, uh, affordable products. I mean, at a lower price point that are very efficacious. It's just a matter of like, you know, weeding through understanding what's marketing, what's, um, face celebrity what is uh packaging and, and then understanding at the end of the day the goop right what is actually working and sometimes even me like i love those tiktoks that go viral and it says hey like <laughs> you saw this boom boom cream but there's a dupe in it was it like trader jones or somewhere like yes. this amazing dupe yeah and um and i was like i love so you know, i love healer i love their products but Yep. I wouldn't mind going for that dupe because <laughs> honestly, like it is expensive, you know, but it's, it's worth yeah. it. But if there is an yeah. amazing product, I want to try. Um, yeah. at half so the apparently price, it doesn't price. smell yeah. quite the same, I've heard. Yeah. Um, so if you're okay. addicted to the smell of the bum bum cream. Um, then yeah, you have to. Well, yeah, fun yeah, fact, you, you like the shampoo <laughs> conditioner. Our, our fragrance um, of our shampoo conditioner is the same person who made the fragrance of bum bum cream. So that's why there that might is... be some similarities. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes me feel like I'm on vacation. Like I'm going to the really? beach a little bit and I love it. That yeah. was the idea. That was the idea. Yeah, yeah exactly. A constant yeah. vacation. And it's, it's needed. Sometimes as a founder, you need that escapism here and there whenever you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> a little vacation in the shower. Yes. A little vacation. Um, yeah. But I also love yeah. that it doesn't make my hair feel heavy. Like it's very light and um, just very love it. So oh, thank my, you. my new hero, hero. Yay. Out. Hero hair product. I was looking for oh, an upgrade, it. so I'm pumped. Um, so oh, thank you. It means honestly so much. And and you know the you know you've not only created you've created a lot of different you know uh, like not just a, a brand you've created a community you've created lots of businesses and you know the struggles it is. But I would love to ask you like now going to create brand like a product with formulas etc. Have you like how do, how do you do both? Like how do you manage? Because <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Well, I think it's because our tech really helps us in the form mm. 
the product line. So they do actually fit really well together. Yeah. It's not easy. I'm really lucky that I have a team that can manage both. Um, and I think I did not realize, especially in this landscape, all the operational complexities of launching and scaling your own line. And so yeah. it's been fun to kind of navigate those and literally drive to drive to the manufacturer and um, make sure things are getting done. And um, it's been exciting, but challenging. Well, tell us about, because I know um, and it, your cleanser is amazing. have to say the superfood cleanser. So tell us about your, that's your new launch, correct? It is our newest launch and it's amazing. doing really well. I'm excited about it. So this has got kale, spinach, uh, what other, it's got, um, what other green ingredients? Tea. Has it got? Green tea, um, amazing. Yeah. And it's, oh. I mean, you probably can tell from the picture, like the inspiration is a cleanser made Used by L'Oreal. Oh, yes. L'Oreal. Well, okay. L'Oreal, also uh, like L'Oreal the, owns you to the people. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so amazing. Um, and they're charging but $36 this is, I was about cleanser. to say, yours is $18. What? Yeah. I don't want to pretend like we're making any money on that. <laughs> I can imagine. I was about to say, <laughs> no, I, okay, I'm glad you said it. Cause I was going to say like, um, you yeah. must have no good like margins. You're, you're giving that, you're giving the, you're basically giving it for free, but it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> the cleanser in particular is pretty rough um, from a margin yeah. perspective because of how expensive it is to ship. I can imagine. Um, yeah. But I, I feel like what consumers don't know is like the cost of formulating products is so inexpensive and exactly. so like l'oreal is making a killing on that product for sure and for i sure. i know because we've literally been like okay what do the ingredients to make this cost and it's and a cleanser and it's a you know and you're very similar it's it's and it's exactly that so i actually think um it is about kind of even reassessing what is a normal kind of margin because i think it kind of gets inflated with brands as we keep on creating products we kind of keep on wanting you know as much profit margin because we think retail and margins and shipping which is true right but actually you don't have to pass on all of that like you you can really minimize that passing on to your consumer uh, and you know focus on just making a better price with value because sometimes i hear cost of goods from certain brands especially in that when i used to work in dior and these like you know these big conglomerates yes. and you'd be like they're charging you know 100 plus but then it costs like <laughs> couple of dollars not $2. really but you know what i mean yeah, yeah literally no literally. actually though uh, like landed the packaging honestly. might cost four <laughs> yeah so it's and it's that kind of like brands don't obviously why would they be transparent to their audience like uh, their customers because that wouldn't be smart from their business need but i do feel like we need to people need to know you know that's the reality and then at least feel comfortable like you know i love the fact that you you've said very openly shipping is the margin eater there, right? But that's yeah. something that people would be like, great, okay, I'm happy to pay a premium for on that cost of good for shipping. But and also you guys should make some money. But um <laughs> but 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 that transparency is so important. Um because now there's so much saturation and so much product um out there. So yeah, I think it's very, very important. So you have the cleanser. Tell us about your other products you have in brand yes. skin. So we have an awesome lineup. I'm so proud of our formulations. Um, we have a hydrating serum. We have a sunscreen, which was really exciting. It compares to the Elta MD. Um, and our vitamin C SKU is, it compares to SkinCeuticals. And that is definitely like our bestseller right now and just kind of starting to take off. We got a... Um, uh, Sarah Palmyra did a video on TikTok and we were all freaking out. And that was really exciting for us to see that kind of traction. Yeah. So how is like social media out of like, yeah, you have a great Instagram community. How has TikTok been for you guys? It's still something we're trying to crack. We have a you know few thousand followers on TikTok and um, we, I've kind of always looked at it as upside and now mm -hmm. I'm starting to look at it as like, this is something we need to figure out. Um, yeah. Especially because it lends itself so well to the like visual comparisons of products. So many um, affordable alternatives start going viral on TikTok. And so I'm really leaning into figuring it out. How have you all handled TikTok as a part of your strategy? It's So I think 
it was a good acceleration because we started two years ago and we went viral, but from an influencer, not from our own channel. And bearing in mind, like we didn't even have a TikTok account created then. So I remember when we were going viral, I was like, oh my God, quickly, quickly, create, it's to create a TikTok account. And like, oh, we were just like scram you know, scrambling. We had no idea, no strategy. And then um, since then, it's been obviously hit and miss, but we've pulsed a lot of viralities from other content creators that has obviously helped grow in our channel and then even on our channel we've done a few content that's gone a little bit like semi-viral viral. never to the level yeah. yeah because i guess like brands are very much harder to get viral compared to like actual creators because it's like a commercial account yeah. they limit you with the sounds and the, probably the reach but then generally speaking it's been one of the largest brand um, revenue drivers that is the difficult most difficult to track but definitely we can sense it being the largest driver revenue for the business to date. So TikTok, 100%, wow. I would say to everyone, like, yeah, like we, we'll see, we've seen moments where we literally in our D2C will see like near six figures in like a few days from TikTok, right? That's um, insane. So yeah. I would definitely recommend like people to do it. But I think the hard part is, is like, how to cult cultivate that um, community on TikTok. And how I found it is as a brand, it's by actually talking about, and you guys are going to be perfect from Brandify perspective, but from a, and for Brandify skin, it'll be interesting is how do you not sell your product, but sell the kind of the glitter around it or the backbone behind it, right? So for us, it's like, what is Ayurveda facts or what is hair health? Or did you know this is why you have hair loss? And then very trickling through whether maybe it's in the comments maybe it's just a little no nod at the end or maybe it's not even at all a mention and people just see it's from fable and main and they see it later that you have products but if you that is the way to do it not product focused um right. uh content creators can talk more about your products but i think obviously if it's like your brand saying this is the best hair oil like people are gonna be yeah. like okay yeah obviously you're gonna we don't say believe you <laughs> yeah. don't believe it. exactly uh, especially if you sponsor um, it and you put some ad on that so they, yeah they're not gonna believe it <laughs> <laughs> but definitely awesome. I, I would really say it's helpful. a big one yeah, yeah. no That's if you cool. ever want to post this podcast we can have a chat and have a lot of little tips for a tiktok um but i'm still learning and now there's like all these new things like be real and live streaming and live shopping and i'm like oh. yeah like it's tough it's um you what you need is you need very like very very like hungry uh very like uh young tiktok social media native talent in your company that just be on it you know like pushing it through because I found as a founder, see, I used to be really into digital. I used to manage digital at Dior and SD. So that was my bread and butter. Yeah. So coming into my company, it's how when you come in with like, uh, I guess your speciality as a CEO, you tend to like hire everyone not in your speciality first because you can, you feel like I can do <laughs> the social media. Yeah. I can post in this. <laughs> and then later I'm like, I really can't be bothered anymore. I'm tired. I don't have the time and patience. Did you have the same thing? Did you have like your speciality coming in? Yeah, I feel like I was strongest in marketing and um, yeah. certainly like kind of waited, waited to hire, hire there. Um, that is so, so funny though, because I feel like one of the things that I struggle with is like, as a founder, I don't really have time to spend a lot of time on social media, Instagram, TikTok learning like how it's going or how to yeah. do it um, but it's also like such a core part of growth and so yeah. understanding it is really important and balancing balancing the two has been been funny yeah and, and so. I guess well I guess one, one question I would have for you is you kind of are doing it a lot on your Instagram too you're seeing that the, the algorithm is going a lot to video content so I love your amazing photo assets but you know the, the the two uh different products that are similar it's like really easy for visually for me to to just see what I'm seeing and get what I need Thank to know yeah. but I do you know we live in a time where like Instagram even tells you like we're not going to show your photos you got to just do videos <laughs> just do like nine out of ten should be videos and you're like okay thanks you're basically trying to become a new TikTok which is fine but then, yeah, like it's tough sometimes to like just create a lot of video content. How yeah. have you guys been finding your video transitioning journey being? Well, it's interesting because we actually did an experiment on this. Um, mm. I don't know. It was like at least six months ago where we pushed out like five pieces of video content a week versus our typical two to three. And because the hypothesis was, all right, Instagram is competing with TikTok. They're going to favor anybody who is giving, you know, more video content. 
and it didn't have a huge effect on our growth rate. And so we actually, you know, pulled back to your typical kind of two to three um, videos per week. But I wonder if we did that same test now, if it would have the same result or if it would drive our growth faster. Um, and mm. I, I think the answer would probably be the latter. But I mean, our yeah. videos definitely get um, a lot of views, a lot of fo- uh, follows, especially when they're in retail. Yeah. No, I've seen that your content, uh, but also like it's, it's, it's content I would love to see as a, as a beauty junkie, but it's like, I love the fact that it's just not sponsored. You know, it's just so organic, so real. Like I actually find like, I couldn't really think of, if you told me to name, if you told me to name five, I wouldn't be able to, even three, (laughs) even two, I couldn't even name any (laughs) organic, non-sponsored, like beauty, like platform for reviews like it just it doesn't exist you know can you name any I don't know um I honestly I can't um I'm trying to think there was one called Massey at one point but I don't think they ended up Okay. And then making it. So at least we are finding a way to make money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank God that you <laughs> so stuck that we can to keep the our going. That's exactly it. And thank God you stuck to the guns because that's what makes today even more of a speciality that this is not just a new thing that came out yesterday. It's like something that's been existing, built right. a community, and stayed that way. I mean, she's a, you know, if you come up, if you, even if you're new to Brandify, like anyone listening today, you know there's that trust of the community has been brewing for a while you know yeah um since 2018 correct yeah. yes i love that word yeah. brewing <laughs> our yeah. community has been brewing since brewing. 2018 <laughs> yeah. yeah i like my um, I, my my descriptors <laughs> but um <laughs> so for, for you like brandify skin i know you're going to create a lot more incredible needed skincare that kind of defies you know the, the norm and what we need what, what we've been seeing and do more what we need but Will you kind of transition out of skin? Could we see it in other verticals? What's the future for Brandify um, for you? Yeah, so I think our process with which we identify gaps is just really working. And so that's been really exciting to see. And I don't want to say that, you know, it wouldn't work in other like high growth, similar verticals like body care or, you know, anything that consumers are looking for affordable alternatives to somewhat in our space. Um, But I want to win in skincare first. And I think that we have, you know, over the next few years, you'll kind of see us like focus on skincare and and win in skincare first to build that kind of trust with the consumer. Uh, and and do you find like in terms of market penetration, are you, are you predominantly U.S. for uh, like uh, focused? We're all U.S. focused right now. Um, our app isn't available in the U.K. yet, but we're working on it. Um, Please, it I can available. help you. I'll, do it, I'll make you do it quicker so I can I can use it. <laughs> it's it's uh, the data regulations. It's not about like. No, the GDPR that we're using, it's just is about not a, complying. It's, it's not a joke here. It's it's horrible. I would even yeah. say maybe it's not even worth it knowing like UK. That's why like Sephora and stuff, all these companies take so long to come here because it's just it's yeah. tough. It's really tough. Yeah. yeah. It's just a, a higher level of like um, monitoring that has to occur that for my team of five people, um, it's just not feasible right now. No. But that's amazing. So you've managed to build everything you've done with an agile, I call it a small but mighty team of five people. Yes, Obviously, you have like freelancers and, and stuff like that, but this is your main core team. Yeah, I'm really, really proud wow. of what we've been able to build. Um, and I do think it's funny. We should probably quiz our audience on like, how big do you think we are? I think people yeah. probably think we have like 10, 20 people. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. You should, I'm still you should responding do a, to a lot of you, Instagram comments. <laughs> and then how much margin do you think we get on our cleanser? They'll be like, you make 10, 15 dollars. It's like zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's enough. what we need. No, no, no. Um, I yeah. know. But yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll po- post this to yeah. Instagram later today. Do it. And, uh, share the results with you. Yeah. Please, um, please. Is your team, that's... how big is your team now? So we are, um, so I will say like the first year in a bit, we were like, I think five for a while. And then suddenly like, because I we opened up a lot of markets. Yeah. And I would say more, it's just the, the nurturing needed in, 
the markets where we were because like yeah. like for example just launching in middle east 100 forms to fill in it was like okay we need someone <laughs> in dubai local yeah and everything was like oh it has to be delivered by person or by post it's like what so like it just made sense to have people there or this so we're now yeah. uh, globally even the majority are in the uk uh we're about 30 people That's so awesome. Yeah, it's growing, it's growing, uh, but it's just, um, yeah, like I'm trying to find that moment where it's like, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking very mindful about it. I've heard like, you know, from so many sides of the coins, I've heard like people saying, um, you know, keep on, like the most important is team, don't, you know, don't hold back, keep on hiring. I've also heard the Glossier effect where you can hire a lot and then you don't want to lay off people. And you know, that's right. a, there's a whole like, it's so tough as a founder because you just don't know. I always say this in everything I do in life and I, and I stick by it is there's no right or wrong decision. There's, there's just a decision and there, every decision has a pro and a con, right? And we just have to go with it and then make another decision after that. So <laughs> that mindset is sort of what I do. Um, I kind of, with my team, I think I, I do rely on some of my leadership in my company to kind of tell me, listen to cash, we need the support or listen, um, you know, we would increase by this. And, I've been growing mindfully and, um, and touch wood today. It's been great because, you know, I've had like full, like no, not many people have left. And if they've left, it's because of, um, the role or something was, wasn't fitting them, but generally it's been a really, you know, we've been building a little family here, which is great, but, uh, it's scary. I used to work in Dior. I used to work in Estee. Politics was a real thing. And now I'm like, oh my God, like when you're 30 people, I can't prevent that stuff. You know, we're going to have people talking, people that, so yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's tough. Uh, do you have, I mean, with five people, I guess, do you have office drama? Not really, right? Not really, unless, well, maybe I'm not aware of it, <laughs> which is very possible. Um, yeah. But it's been, like, I feel like every time we add a person, it's just, like, so exciting because it's so exciting. Like, another person it's and they always add something new and different to the culture. That's it. That's exactly we're, it. Oh. We're, like, pet obsessed. So every app really? version that we launch, yes, is named after someone's, like, pet um and so that's kind of like a fun little little culture thing for us do you have a any pets by any chance i do i have three dogs um i have a maltese a shipu and a cavapoo so kind of like and one's black brown white and they're just like well no i was going to say they're all best friends but they're not two of them hate each other so that's not true <laughs> but um <laughs> because two of them the girls and one is a guy and, and then the guy is like 10 years old 11 years old the boy yeah. And he's just like a lone ranger, just does his thing. He's like, no one touched me. I'm just doing my thing. And then the other two, they just are like two like bosses of the house. And my sister spoils them so much. And my sister spoils them to the extent where like one of them has to drink out of, it's embarrassing to say, but like a, like a glass, like a, 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 like a glass, uh, yeah, like a, a glass. Um, so or she will, uh, Yeah, a chalice, literally a chalice. And every time I'm like, I don't even drink out of this chalice. Like, it's more bougie than me. But that's that's my sister for you. Do you that's have any pets? So funny. <laughs> yes, uh, 85 pound chocolate Labrador, and he is awesome. And now I'm super excited because that just gave us three app versions to name, you know, three dogs to name app versions after. So you'll have to send yeah. me a picture of all three of them after. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I'll send it straight um, after. We'll have their yeah. app named after them. <laughs> we we um, have uh, Vegas, Coco, and Chai. <laughs> They're perfect. Quite fun. That, I yeah. feel like the Chai version is going to be the cutest. Chai is going to be cute. <laughs> and Chai is the newest and she's cute. She's like, she's like cute. <laughs> That's cute. Amazing. Uh -huh. So, um, I mean, I, I have um, a question a little bit about, you know, let's park brand of fight to the side more about meg so as a founder i you know and definitely the pandemic has shaped a lot of new rituals and mindset changes because it was a it was a crazy time uh a how was the pandemic for you as a founder like what were some of your kind of experiences building the brand yeah so i do think i would have done so many more things in person I uh, mm -hmm. it was such a critical time for launching our brand. And I feel like maybe we missed out on a little bit of that, but there were so many, you know, other things that, um, that shaped the way, you know, we interacted as a company. Like we did work from home for the first several months of the pandemic and then had a, you know, back in office safely kind of approach. Um, and it was kind of, 
cool to see people's work and personal lives blend. Like in the past, and especially working at a big consumer packaged goods company, it would never be appropriate for like a kid to pop it on in on a Zoom or a dog to bark. And I feel like now that's just like a part of life. And mm. um, that blending, I think, really like benefit. It, you know, it's I think it's really challenging for a lot of people, but it also benefits um, us in so many ways. Just having that blend be more acceptable. Definitely. And did, did you find like, did you get any new um, kind of routines or rituals that you kind of adopted even today? Like, I mean, some of us came out drinking matcha every morning, <laughs> going yoga <laughs> twice a day. Yeah. I don't know. What did you, what did you end up coming out of long, um, long time? <laughs> I did actually start painting and that was really fun. And then also um, my morning ritual, I'm like a huge coffee drinker always. Um, but I started going on like a plant tour. So my fellow plant lovers or gardeners, um, it's like actually kind of common that you like go check on your plants in the morning. <laughs> and so that has become like my morning, morning ritual, go see what's changed, make sure everybody's okay. That kind of thing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's a, I mean, especially cause what's it like in Virginia? Is it like the weather? Cause I, I never, I know that I know. The capital is Richmond. Uh, Am I wrong? Am I being really DC, stupid here? District. DC. So the U.S. capital is District of Columbia. The U.S. capital. Yeah. What is Richmond um, then? It, that is the capital of Virginia. So. Okay. Very very good. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I, I was Love like that. I was like. <laughs> because cool, in school I was that kid that was quite annoying I was like let's go around <laughs> saying all the states and then let's go around name all the capitals <laughs> so, hey, yeah, try to remember it um, which Very doesn't serve me well at all and you know it's useless it's a useless <laughs> thing to know but, uh, but it now it helps a little bit in these moments definitely, um, definitely put me on the spot <laughs> it's like wait a second what's <laughs> Um, but um but yeah so so what is the weather like what's it like there generally speaking i'm just i might come visit one time i'm very curious um please do i would love to host we have uh four seasons the summer is really hot really sweaty very humid um like i thrive in high heat and like even the summer was too much for me really (laughs) sweating constantly yeah (laughs) Yeah, I think right now it's just, uh, yeah, even everywhere in the world has become crazy, even London. So I feel you. Um, but yeah, I you heard, have to come to London. London. You have to come to London. Well, you come to I London, to we'll work on Brandify's it. rollout plan. We'll make something happen. Uh, so we'll make sure we do that. We'll do that. You can so, um, through GDPR. <laughs> Exactly. I'll, I'll sort that out for you. Leave that with me. Uh, the, the worst part, I'll, I'll fix that. <laughs> um, but uh, before we go into fire round questions, I have a sort of desert island situation for you. So um, you're invited to a founder beauty retreat, but you can only bring one Brandify skin product with you. So what is your go-to product that you've created so far? I'm going to bring the Daily Triple. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just obsessed with it. Our chemists that created it she actually spent 20 years at Estee Lauder um, so your alma mater as well and it just has like so many different great ingredients in it that that that's if I could only use one product I'd use that one because it's got so much so much goodness amazing oh well I mean I I think uh, I'm like we can't not bring sunscreen (laughs) exactly exactly but i mean so, you've got yeah. it's going to be it's a it's a tough I'm, I'm a mean person because you have such amazing products and they all have different benefits so yeah you can try to like sneak in a few more i'm sure i'll, I'll let you <laughs> thanks <laughs> so now we're going to do fire round questions so this is first thing that comes to your mind so the first question is what's another beauty brand you're currently loving hmm, i love tower 28 um amazing the wow, SOS 28. rescue spray, like it's game changing. It's amazing. Oh, I, very I'm, refreshing. Um, very I'm actually, refreshing. I'm, I, I just am a don't wear a lot of makeup, and mm. it has to be very quick. Um, and I love like just like throwing on a little bit of their Beach Please, um, yeah. blush, and so simple and easy. Yeah, amazing. Well, uh, what's a guilty pleasure of yours? The British Baking Show. Love it. <laughs> Did you watch the last season? Oh, I have watched all of the seasons. All of them. My, so a very good family friend of ours since a childhood is Chris. Um, so did you watch the, the final three? 
Oh yes, yeah. I've seen so them yeah, all. so you, so Christelle, do you know uh, Christelle? Yes. Per, yeah. yeah, she was. She she's, is, I've known her since I was a child. Yeah, she's very. She cool. is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, and the funniest um, thing is, is like I, I didn't even. Re- I met her like a month before Great British Bake Off was releasing, and obviously she didn't. She couldn't tell me because she probably was an NDA and stuff. But I was like, I know. I knew she was going to cooking and baking, but I was like. I didn't know A, she was this good and I would that have good. asked her to bake me stuff. She's amazing. So I was just so proud of her and she's like blowing up. So she's, she deserves all the success. She's amazing. Well, you can thank her for me because honestly that show like helped me get through multiple fundraisers. I feel oh, like really? it's just so, yeah, I feel a, like it really helps with uplifting. the stress. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. Oh, I love that. I'll mention that. That's very cool. Um, what are you currently watching or reading right now? I am reading... Um, the Leonard Lauder, uh, mm. book that he just wrote. It's actually called, I have a, uh, the company I keep. And mm. it was really cool to understand how, like, I really didn't understand the history of Estee Lauder before reading this book and how it really was, you know, 50 years ago, it was its own little startup. And that's been really inspirational. I'm actually going to Kindle it, like audio book it, um, tonight and add it in my credit so that's a really I didn't even I you worked in Estee Lauder I didn't even realize um he had a book so thanks for that of course yeah amazing. I think it just came out okay cool okay I don't feel as bad but I'm gonna definitely because every time like I one of the questions I'm going to ask you later is about a favorite quote or mantra and Leonard's quotes come up a lot so I'm sure that book is a lot of nuggets is it him writing it or is it like ghost written or in his I, it it seems like he's writing it because it has so okay. many good personal stories but it could be mm. uh it might I'm be sure him d- someone, dictating yeah. it and then yeah, yeah amazing yeah. that's that's what exactly that's at least he's got his nuggets of wisdom that's the most important um, i can't get over that he took a two o'clock nap every day did really? you like did you hear yes like every day no matter where he was if he was like on a bus with other estee lauder people he would just take a nap <laughs> i cannot and what time get did he wake that. up what time did he wake I up i think it was Must like a been... short one like a 20 minute or but 20 minute um, wow very cool yeah. okay like could you I mean, as a founder ever take a 20 minute nap in the middle of no. the day <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the thing is i would lie down and then i'd be like yeah no get back up <laughs> like, I, my brain my going. brain would be like you ain't sleeping you gotta do those emails right now yeah. <laughs> i'm like okay sorry. not a chance yeah <laughs> not, a t- not a chance but i like the thought but i'm sure if i if i stuck to it I'll, I'll, and i gave that my ritual you could actually make an amazing day out of that because you 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 make sure you don't have stressful meetings and big meetings around that, and then you have a big yeah. gap in the mar- in the day, which is a bit more mindful and calm. It's actually quite it's quite it's quite a good idea. Maybe we should so give it a try. We should try it. Let's give it a go and then see how long we last. Which one of us caves in first? Um, <laughs> let's go with maybe eighty seconds. Eighty seconds. I agree. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite social media platform right now? Ooh. Um... Let's see. I really, I am excited about trying Be Real because of the mm. whole authentic aspect. Yeah. Um, and I do, I like Instagram because I feel like I learn a lot when I'm trying to learn, you know, the cooking stuff. I've gotten kind of more into food lately. Um, yeah. And so that's been helpful. Amazing. Um, do you have a favorite quote or mantra? I love, uh, there's a sports writer uh, when one great score comes to you to write against your name, he marks not that you won or lost, but how you played the game. It's quite a long one, mm. but I think it's really good. It's like all about, um, you know, how yeah. matters kind of as much as what. No, very cool. No, I like that. I'll definitely, you, you, you got me two things, landlord's book, and <laughs> I'm going to write that quote down. So thanks. <laughs> and and um, my last question is if you want a beauty entrepreneur, what would Meg be doing right now? That is an excellent question. Um, I would probably be doing something else, very entrepreneurial. And Mm. um, hopefully it would allow me even more time outdoors than I get now. (laughs) Um, Well, Meg, it's been such a pleasure. I actually... I'm hurting my jaw because I've been smiling this whole time. So I, I um, honestly, you've been such a pleasure to speak to you. And I know this is just the beginning of our friendship. So um, I'm excited to continue talking uh, off this pod. But for those who are listening that want to continue following you, where can everyone find yourself, Brandify, Brandify Skin? What are all the handles? Yes. So at Brandify underscore on Instagram. Um, and you can find all of our other socials there. And I'm at Meg Pride 
um, also on Instagram. And uh, this was such a pleasure. I'm obsessed with my new shampoo and conditioner yeah. and like so pleased with it. Thank you so much. Um, no, and thank this was you. such a fun to be a part, fun to talk well, to you and be a part of this. Well, thank you so much. I'll put all the links as usual, guys, in the summary so you can just click straight away. And Meg, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I'll see you either very soon in London or in Virginia or somewhere else in the world. I'm sure we'll make it happen. Can't wait.